The design for an F-50 is fascinating. It clearly it's powered by nature, but it achieves incredible speed. And we've only really just started. As we use artificial intelligence to, to actually learn what the best practices are too, because we're using a lot of big data and machine learning to actually learn what's working best in practice and why. Well, of course, that's accelerating change to, to levels that we've never seen in the past. The whole machine learning aspect is, is, is incredible. You know, we had a situation in Sydney where uh, Oracle Corporation brought in some of their top technicians in this part of the world to actually see what we could do with the enormous amount of data that's coming off these, these boats. So we have, each boat has 800 sensors on it. It is producing an incredible amount of data every tenth of a second. So that is all housed in the Oracle Cloud. And this, this group of technicians took that data from the first race day they wrote some software around how it was accepting the, the data and then produced 10 insights. And two of those insights completely blew our technical team away. And that was, that was just in 20 minutes of, I guess, the, the machine learning. So you can imagine what the future holds. You want to see the, how the plug and play works and the, the mechanism. And, and how quickly do you reckon you can change a module? I think if you were to focus on one wing only, you'd have the module changed in about 25 minutes. That's great, isn't it? One of the really important things is the aerodynamics. But the new wing sails that we have, you know, incredible pieces of equipment. You can manipulate the shape of those sails a lot more effectively than we could in the past. That has a dramatic impact on performance and also allows us much more chance of running the racing to a schedule. So if we have light winds or very strong winds, we can still race, which is obviously key for putting on a reliable sports entertainment property. Right. Images here. Watching Benes, the out control, oh, two hey. from two, from the greatest Olympic sailor in history. We are looking to expand into some non-marine fields. The aerospace industry is one of those where we can build very high-spec, customised components. We're under confidentiality restrictions for obvious reasons, but there is a, a lot of pretty cool stuff going on here at Core Builders. Well, I think Larry Ellison's given given these teams an incredible chance to you know, establish themselves as, as professional teams. But, you know, like everything that Larry Ellison does, the people involved know that they have to perform, and if they if they don't achieve the goals, both in a competitive sense on the water and in a commercial sense, then they won't be around forever. That's for sure. You know, the good thing is that there are other teams wanting to get into Sail GP. So. That being the case, of course, as we expand the number of teams, that will be a good thing. We'll, we'll either be able to replace teams with already fully commercialised, if you like. Also, it'll create demand for those teams, and, and, and of course, uh, that creates a competitive situation, and, which I think can only be good for the future of Sail GP. And it's Great Britain who take the first victory of 2020. I don't think there's any doubt that Sail GP now has the best sailors in the world out there competing in the fastest boats, even though they're using these incredibly high-tech machines. It's the skill of the sailors that will, that will win through, and it's going to be interesting to see in, in Season 2 who actually comes out on top.